we'd uh, been engaged for four days. I dived for seven years and Sue had dived for about two years. Sue was a relatively experienced diver. In going down, it was quite a normal descent. As often happens in the Bristol Channel, there was a fairly strong current. And as we were swimming into the current, it was fairly hard work. After a relatively short period of time, Sue signalled that she wasn't at all comfortable. The standard signal for a diver for that is just a shaking of the hand. And as soon as she did that, then she took off towards the surface, really without any warning. Sue was risking her life. Racing to the surface so fast could leave her paralysed. Down below, John knew there was nothing he could do to help. If I had shot up really quickly at the same sort of speed as Sue, I could have injured myself. And so having two injured divers on the surface is worse than having one injured diver on the surface. The accident taught John a lesson he will never forget. Diving is a safe sport, but underwater it's still an alien world. It puts people and their equipment under pressure. Managing pressure is what diving is all about. On the day, we met early to pick up our cylinders and get them filled at the compressor station. These cylinders are a diver's life support system. Inside each one is a phone box full of air, compressed down so much that the cylinders actually get heavier as they're filled. The air inside weighs as much as three bags of sugar. Let out all at once, that air would blow a diver's head off. So a mouthpiece releases it slowly, regulating the pressure to keep the diver alive for up to an hour underwater. Divers know that everything depends on their equipment working perfectly, so they check and double-check it on the surface. Down below, it could be too late. It's going up and down that can cause problems. Divers must wait for their bodies to adapt to the change in pressure on their skin and inside their heads. All diving masks have got a uh a nose built into the mask, either hidden in underneath, or in my case, I've got the mask with a nose built into the front. Um, and you just pinch your nose and blow, and your ears pop. That pop is a good sign. It means the pressure inside your ears has adjusted to the pressure outside. It's one of the first tricks Charlotte Hope teaches her trainee divers. Good. As Charlotte dives deeper, she can feel her body being squeezed. That's pressure. It happens because the weight of the water in a column directly above is pressing on her skin. The deeper a diver goes, the more weight of water there is pushing down on there. You can see that as I descend, with this empty plastic bottle. The bottle is crushed as the air is compressed inside. The air is still inside the bottle. It's just being compressed into a smaller space by the force of water weighing down from above. The plastic buckles because it's not strong enough to withstand that force. This glass jar is open at the bottom. As the pressure increases, it forces water into the jar, reducing the surface area of the air trapped at the top. It shows there's a link between force, pressure, and surface area. As I descend, with this upturned glass container, the pocket of air shrinks, even though no air escapes. This is what happens to all the air spaces in a diver's body. 
which is why divers must remember to allow the pressure in those air spaces to equalize with the water pressure outside. Flesh and bones won't crush, but there is hidden danger in a diver's blood. Sue should have surfaced slowly, over 90 seconds. But in this emergency, instinct took over. She cut out those vital seconds. She put her life on the line. She was like a rocket going up to the surface. She was just disappeared. And um, I uh, wear a small computer, which gives you a warning if you're going up too fast. And I went up as quickly as my computer would allow me. I got to the surface, and Sue was unconscious. I was looking after Sue, trying to make sure that she was as comfortable as possible, that she was still actually breathing. Push! Push! Sue started to come round and was obviously in great distress. Very, very dizzy. Uh, that she couldn't breathe. Is she OK? She was constantly complaining, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Is she breathing? She's breathing. We've got a pulse. Get the others up in case they've got the same problem. Susan? Susan, can you hear me? Susan! Explosive charges brought the others back to the surface. She was lapsing in and out of consciousness. Uh, seven miles north of Ilfracoon. <laughs> she was constantly complaining, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and so she was pulling her neck seal out from her throat. What could possibly have gone wrong? Sue was a trained diver, yet she broke the diver's golden rule. She risked bursting her lungs. On top of that, she knew she was heading for every diver's nightmare, the bends. A diver's blood behaves like a fizzy drink in a bottle. With the cap on, there's no fizz. The gas which creates it is trapped in the drink by pressure. Opening the bottle releases the pressure all at once. That makes the bubbles come bursting out. These laboratory pictures show the same thing happening in a diver's blood vessels. Tiny bubbles of nitrogen gas form and stop the blood delivering vital food and oxygen to body tissue. That's what causes the bends. They can kill. When Sue reached the surface, her problems were only just beginning. She was still under pressure, not from water, but from the weight of the air in the atmosphere above her. It's called atmospheric pressure. Like the pressure under water, it changes as you go up and down. Pilots depend on changing air pressure to measure how high they are. A Flight 22 Squadron from RAF Chivner headed out to Sue and John, knowing they had to get her to a place where her body pressure could be controlled safely, a recompression chamber. I'm a doctor, a general practitioner working near the airbase, and on that day I was present on the helicopter uh, to assist with the care of casualties. When we arrived, as always, we asked the name of the person. It wasn't very obvious who she was because of the diving suit and so on, but she mentioned her name, and I realised immediately that she was actually one of my patients, which was a happy coincidence. I couldn't believe it. There was the normal crew on the helicopter, and Dr Pope was actually on board as well. So she was in the best possible hands from the moment she was on board. She had come up in a hurry, feeling unwell, so one had to assume that this was the bends. Mm -hmm. 